sure you've all heard of culture shock. Well, we're actually going to try and work our way through it a little bit, uh, maybe give you some tools to help you from culture shock to acculturation and adaptation and uh, going through the process of assimilating culture. So uh, hopefully we'll have some smiley faces uh, rather than some frown faces as a result of your culture, uh, cross-cultural experiences and learning about different uh, identity and multiculturalism and globalization. So we think of acculturation or simulation, adaptation to a new culture. A nice mnemonic device to think through uh, are the ABCs. So the effective, which is a stress and coping approach, uh, behavioral, sociocultural adaptation. We'll look at uh, some of that in more detail as well. And the cognitive, the social identification theories. And we'll look through these as we go through this presentation. Now, as we think of a cultural learning framework, uh, first will be based in social experimental psychology, fairly new field, uh, and then we'll look at um, how the intercultural difficulties can be lessened as we um, acquire more uh, culturally appropriate skills um, within a, a, an adapted culture and the multi multicultural society in which we, we find ourselves in. We'll see that that actually will lead to better behavioral outcomes for both um, us uh, as the outsider and for the uh, person's uh, host culture, which in, we're going to be working in. So we'll um, see how that, that can, can really be a, a big benefit by having this, um, this understanding as we move through. Under this area of the conceptual frameworks, we'll look at culture learning and uh, the stress and coping mechanism for the effective area. And so here I created a little bit of a, a graphic to kind of distill this a little bit for our understanding in, in a cross-cultural uh, situation for adaptation. Uh, in the socio-cultural area, um, learning the social skills generally, and then in a domain-specific area for a specific job, if you're an educator, or if you're working for a company in HR or doing some training for a company, yeah, that would be in, in that sociocultural area, your job performance, okay? Um, generally, in your social skills and how you would interact with that group, um, and then psychological would be more of the your personal well-being, generally speaking, and then your domain-specific job satisfaction. So those things will affect that and your understanding. So in this graphic, and in, in cultural learning through a context, the cultural context here at the top, and then the organizational context at the bottom, you see the individual characteristics that stand out. So these will be, you know, different for each person depending on their experiences and what um, cultural grid they're coming from. Plus the learning opportunities they have within an, another culture. Uh, also what training they have, any kind of overseas experience or intercultural experience living within a multicultural society, uh, what, it, what, what has influenced them. And over time, they will over uh, time be able to blend these two into some specific cultural skills and behaviors to help them um, assimilate and adapt into that new culture. Here's a compiled list of some predictors of sociocultural adaptation. Obviously, understanding the culture specifically um, where the group that you're working with, that local group, uh, language proficiency, um, you know, what, whatever language, um, you know, the, the host culture is, speaks, if it's the same as yours or different, uh, that's going to obviously affect the amount of adaptation you can have um, and, and will feel. Um, your intercultural contact, I mean, are you distant from them? Do you go home to, a, to a, uh, another place away from, you know, like maybe a compound or something like that um, where you're not having that contact with the people on a daily basis only in the work environment or the school environment? Um, uh, intercultural training, what's your background there? Um, cultural distance, and we'll look at that in, a, in the next slides coming up as far as, you know, how many cultures away from your host culture is it? For example, um, you know, assimilating to an Australian or New Zealand cu culture would probably be easier for an American 
than it would be for an American going to, say, example, for uh, into um, an Asian culture. OK, just like it might be easier for uh, somebody from China to assimilate into um, Korea or uh, South Korea or uh, Vietnam or something like that, or even into Thailand or Malaysia. OK, uh, and we'll look at the, that cultural distance based on um, similarities and things like that. Uh, length of residence in the new culture. Uh, you know, if you're fairly new, you've been there for five or 10 years, you know, that's going to be a big difference. Get through that first year, especially, um, would definitely be a predictor. Now moving into the behavioral um, section of the ABCs of acculturation, you know, we have the effective, we just looked at, and now the behavioral uh, into sociocultural adaptation. This is a nice graphic by Mascoret and Ward uh, and looking at our behavioral our relationships, you know, intercultural language communication and how that affects our adaptation into the sociocultural um, realm and sphere. It has all these things, all these areas have some, some really good predictors and some good influences on helping us to assimilate and to adapt behaviorally. I think these next items here on globalization identity, some things that will really help um, adapt in, in, in the behavioral areas, interpersonal skills for interacting with hosts. You know, if you're Introvert here, you're going to be an introvert in a different culture. If you're an extrovert here, you're going to extrovert in a different culture. So knowing those things, are you'll take those with you. You know your your temperament, your personality, and you know how you interact here. Um, you know some people for whatever reason think that they'll act differently in a different culture. You know based on how that culture, for whatever some reasons they think that they'll you know become like the superhero or or be able to. Um, you know, kind of shed their past in a sense, but in reality, we take it with us. And so understanding those things that you will take with you and, you know, how you need to maybe adjust, uh, tone down or to, or to uh, bring up a little bit um, uh, some personality skills. So understanding the host culture values is, is key. And then also what are the work performance standards in, in, in that way? So, you know, we're, are you going to be offensive if you're trying to you know, browbeat everybody after lunch and say, hey, we got back here, you know, a half hour uh, where they may be typically used to taking an hour and a half to two hour lunch with a siesta. So those things will, um, once again, knowing that host culture will be uh, key. And now here's the uh, graphic uh, with the cultural, uh, cultural distance uh, and, and the predictors here uh, by Ward and Kennedy that put this together, you know, on a scale of 12 here of how different it would be for us to work in uh, different cultures, whether you're from J Japan or, or New Zealand, um, Malaysians working in New Zealand or Americans working in Singapore and some of the distance cultural distances with, that we have with each other. You see, Britons and Americans, pretty close. Uh, Malaysians and Chinese, I mentioned earlier, pretty close. Uh, Japan and Chinese has a, quite a big difference. And Japan um, and Malaysian, Japanese and Malaysians and New Zealand, a little bit uh, closer there. So I think, you know, just seeing that kind of makes sense a little bit of, you know, trying to understand uh, assimilation issues that we may have in ad adaptation. Uh, depending on what cultural distance we have from the culture that we're going into. Here we'll delve in a little bit deeper on the effective um, area of stress and coping that we talked about earlier on that first slide uh, when we introduced the ABCs of acculturation, assimilation, adaptation, and look at the different level factors with uh, you know, that, that affect this, our age, gender, personality, social support, discrimination, all these things will have, uh, be a factor in how we uh, cope uh, and uh, with stress and, and within a cultural context. And then seeing those adapt, adaptive outcomes at the end. Here we see some of the predictors of a, uh, psychological adaptation, just like we saw earlier. Uh, predictors of the sociocultural adaptation, so life events and appraisals, coping styles, uh, one's personality, and then the social support around you. Uh, do you have a, a good social 
uh, support, uh, friends, uh, organizationally, um, you know, your host culture, what, what sort of mechanisms are in place to help you with with dealing with with things and adapting psychologically to the to the culture and, and all the new things and the language and uh, ways of doing things differently. Here are some ideas about social support and getting that help. Um, expatriates can use uh, local and overseas sources for social support. Uh, evaluate as uh, overseas sources, about as closer, stronger, and more familiar. Um, local sources are used most often for practical informational support. You can read the, the last one there of, of the different uh, emotional support and, and helping the, with that psychological adaptation as you go through the, the, the change process of assimilating and adapting into a new culture. Another thing to think about in the social readjustment rating scale has come up with is, you know, some of the things that are going to affect your um, cross-cultural adaptation too, or, is, you know, obviously the transition overseas, but also life changes. You know, what kind of work, what kind of new social activities are you involved in? Where are your, your family members? You know, do you have younger kids, older kids? Are they left back in your home country versus gone with you? What sort of things have happened there? What sort of... Um, Friendships and leaving friends behind and gaining new friends, uh, living conditions obviously is going to be a, a huge deal uh, along with your residence. You know, we're moving overseas and having different, uh, you know, ways of getting uh, mail and, and doing exchange uh, for currencies and everything is just so much different. And so, you know, thinking through these things and helping you to, uh, rate these on a scale of, of the things that are going to affect you more. Um, these are just a few of the items, but obviously there's there's lots more. And we may discuss that a little bit more maybe in our discussion area. Things that, that would need to be considered um, important to uh, think through in an adjustment. And for some people, those would be different than others. You know, some things would be more intense and some things maybe, I ah, don't worry so much about that. Uh, maybe you're a sports fan, you you want to watch American football and you can't see it all the time when you normally like you would in the States. Uh, vice versa, if you really like soccer and uh, football <laughs> from the, you know, general sense of the rest of the world sees it, um, or cricket or rugby or something like that, you know, just things like that that, that may affect May, may affect one's uh, okay. shopping is another one, big one for women, and the ability to be able to go out on their own versus needing to go with a group or with a male uh, figure to protect them is, is a line of protection. So all those things will, um, you know, be predictors and help us to understand what's it going to take for us to adjust and how to how to adjust to those those changes. And I think this is really um, key to think through, too, as well. Appraisal, expectations, adaptation. You know, what do we do when our expectations aren't met? And they will not be met in a, in a different culture. So you're going to feel that frustration. So what happens next? You know, what happens? How, how are you going to deal with that? Is it going to go into a culture of stress that, that kind of wears on you for a while, and then all of a sudden a, an event happens and it becomes a cultural uh, culture shock that we hear of so much and you get that real intense overwhelming feeling that you want to get out and go uh, you know get out of there and go back home to your home country and obviously you probably felt this as well in the appraisal expectation adaptation even even in your own country um, the expectations you know the experiences you know the greater those discrepancies are maybe somebody's talked up a movie or a TV show or a book and you read it or you went to it and it wasn't everything that you thought it was going to be. It was it was OK, but it didn't live up. Well, in a different culture, that's going to affect you as well with your expectations will affect you psychologically.